Hey guys, Magnetico here, and welcome back to the series of videos where we take video game systems, we clean them up, repair them if need be, and sometimes we even mod them. And today we're going to be taking a final look and putting the final touches into the Nintendo 64 that we've been working on for a bit now. This is the same one that I bought off eBay that only came with a power cord and it was untested. Luckily, the system worked just fine and we went ahead and cleaned it up and we also installed in the second video the RGB mod by Voltar. So we're going to go ahead and open this system up for this video and we're going to go ahead and replace the thermal pads and we're going to go ahead and install the expansion pack as well there's also a red controller that i purchased for this where the joystick wasn't working very well so we're going to replace the joystick make sure that controller is nice and clean there's lots of other accessories that i bought for this that i'll show you as the video goes but there's one in particular that i am really excited about and you probably already noticed it in the back here you noticed the crits box here and uh, we'll talk about it just stay tuned for that as well but if this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through and cleans up systems repairs them and also mods them and that way we can use these particular systems for our gameplay videos uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button that way you're notified every time i post a video let's get started so what we're going to need is going to be the n64 that we've been working on we're gonna need some tools so we can open up the N64. I do have videos where I disassemble and reassemble the N64. We're gonna need an expansion pack because some games do require this, otherwise they're unplayable. We're gonna need a controller here. This is optional, but the joystick doesn't work on this one and we're gonna be replacing it. Some thermal pads. And for this setup, we're gonna use the half millimeter one. Some X-Acto knives or an X-Acto knife set so we can cut the thermal pads, isopropyl alcohol, 99% Q-tips and a toothbrush. I'll be linking these items in the description below. So here's the N64 motherboard. And as you can see, I already did a practice run on the, the new thermal pads. These other two blocks, they still have the old gray thermal pads on them. So we're gonna be replacing these kind of dirty. So yeah, definitely worth replacing. So with the half millimeter pad here, um, we're gonna go ahead and take the block and an X-Acto knife and just kind of place it carefully at the very top corner like so, and we're gonna do a trace cut. As you can see, I already have that practice cut out there. It does not have to be perfect, but with the X-Acto knife, you're gonna get pretty close. Make sure you use a little bit of force when using the X-Acto knife that we can cut through the plastic and are able to take the actual cutout out. So with the thermal pad area exposed, we're gonna place that on top of the block. The plastic should now be at the top here and we're not gonna take that off at the moment. We don't want any dirt or dust building up on that thermal pad quite yet. So we're gonna do one last second cleanup with my fiber cloth here on the chip itself and then we're gonna remove the plastic. I'm not using gloves for this just because, you know, we're dealing with adhesives here and it's kind of a pain in the butt with gloves. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten out that thermal pad because there was a couple of wrinkles on it. But once that's done, we can go ahead and place it on top. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect, but now this N64 is ready for many years of gaming. For time's sake, I already did the other block as well. We're just going to go ahead and place it on top here. Some people do recommend using the one millimeter uh, thermal pad for conductivity sake. I stuck with the half millimeter one. So it's up to you guys which, at, which one you want to do. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and add in the expansion pack. We're going to use this tool here so we can remove the jumper pack that came in the N64. All right, go ahead and put that aside. And then we're going to take the expansion pack and we're just going to go ahead and replace it and put it inside the N64. We're going to grab the lid, close it up, and we are done with all our internal replacements. So here I'm going to do a quick time lapse of me tearing down this red controller that I got off eBay with the faulty joystick. Here I am removing the actual joystick itself here and I kind of mess around with it and then I kind of put it aside here. I did tear off the rest of the controller and I took off the membranes and the buttons and make sure I cleaned those with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and the rest of the shell. Surprisingly getting this off eBay, this controller was actually in really, really good condition. The buttons were the only thing that needed any kind of cleaning and then I grab a napkin here with some isopropyl alcohol and feed the wire through it so I can get the rest of the dirt. And when I open this napkin, as you can see, again, that this controller was in pretty good shape. Whoever had this before me uh, took care of this controller. But usually I like to open up the napkin and look, there's like barely any dirt on this, which is kind of nice. 
So here I am cleaning the connector here with the isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. And I will be doing a video on an actual controller. I have another black one that I bought off eBay that actually does need some work and a joystick replacement. So if you guys want to see that, let me know and I'll go ahead and make a video on that as well. But now this red one is ready to rock and roll. For those of you wondering, the actual replacement joystick that I bought was called a Sharpshooter N64 stick. This is the one that I've been using for two of the controllers that I've fixed so far. I have one left and again, I'll be posting a video on that if you guys want. But that way you guys know what the box looks like. It is from old school and so far it has worked great. There are other ones out there that are a little bit cheaper, but I do recommend the old school version for this particular N64 uh, and joystick replacement. So now that the N64 controller that we have here is done, what I like to do is grab uh, like an analog stick thumb grip that you can get for super cheap and just place it on top. That way you were playing Mario Kart or Mario Party in this case and you're having to do the circles, you don't shred your hand. That's one of the things these controllers were known for. So one last accessory. And that's kind of what we're gonna focus on in this portion of the video is the accessories that I got for the N64. I tried to go for the things that were only necessities because man, Nintendo is known for those accessories and you know, making money off of those. But I think rumble is really important. And what I ended up getting was this uh, rumble pack for the N64, but there's something different about this. Of course, it goes into the controller like it always did and it looks good a little heavy at the bottom but this is a modded rumble pack and you can get these off ebay where somebody or you can do it yourself if you guys want but i got mine off ebay there's a little change that you could make to the actual innards of this to make it not require any batteries and it'll work just fine so it'll work like a like a dual shock controller where it just uses the uh, actual console's power to provide power to the rumble here so no batteries needed this will work just fine it is just a mod that people found out about that they can use the n64's power to actually power the rumble pack which i think is great so no more batteries you guys don't have to worry about it whoever found that out thank you so much One more set of accessories I want to talk about before we get to the Crix box here is I went ahead and bought some video cables for this system and I bought the OEM Nintendo AV cables, which I'll probably never use, but just to have it inside the box and just to have them, I went ahead and got these. But more importantly, uh, if you guys remember me doing the RGB mod on my second video, this is the actual RGB SCAR cable that I got for the N64. This is from Retro Gaming Cables based off Europe, and I do love their cables. I think they're great. I have been purchasing the Retro Access cables as well, which are based off the US. So depending on where you're located around the world, um, that is the way to go. Retro Access is for US users, and then Retro Gaming Cables would be for more the UK users for shipping purposes. It just gets to you faster. But I tend to buy both. Uh, I did order the Retro Access ones as well, but they haven't arrived quite yet. But if you guys don't have SCAR or are not interested in SCAR or you just want a plug and play solution, I also went ahead and got the HD Retrovision component cable. And this one was a pretty penny, to be honest with you. I just hit my microphone there, sorry. But this one was a, a pretty penny to get. And uh, I don't know if I'll be leaving SCAR for component because these component cables and for other systems as well is becoming more readily available as opposed to SCAR. So that'll be a discussion or a video for a different time. If you guys have an opinion on that, make sure you post that in the comments below and let me know what you guys think. But just to have the accessibility uh, for all kinds of cables and testing, I went ahead and purchased both of these. So without further ado, guys, I know you guys have been waiting on this. Let's talk about this box here. This is an EverDrive 64. The version I got was the X7, which is the newest one as of this video. What it allows you to do is play ROM card backups or ROMs from this cartridge that is shaped just like a Nintendo 64 cartridge. I went ahead and went with the red one. There is another gray one available. This manual doesn't have anything too exciting. It's actually pretty easy to set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the cartridge out of the plastic now. The cartridge itself does support PAL and NTSC systems. And it does have a pretty good uh, gold hard plating cartridge contacts. That way, if you keep removing the cartridge from the system and putting it back in, they don't get scratched up too easily. As you can see, here is a USB port if you want to develop some stuff for it. And on the other side here, you'll find the actual slot for the micro SD card. It does have pretty fast loading from what my testing, and it also has an emulator for an NES if you guys want to go that route. But I'm not going to go any higher than a 32 gigabyte micro SD card because you can fit an entire system library just on this cart for one region. So uh, you don't need anything. The file sizes for the N64 were pretty small. 
there are other carts out there on the market. There is the ED64 or the 64 plus, both retailing on eBay and on Amazon between 100 and $130, which are great options. The Crits uh, X7 actually cost about $200. Now there is value in that for several reasons. The X5 and the other cards I mentioned do come with a bit of a weird feature that when you want to save a game, you actually hold, have to hold down the reset button in order for the save to complete. Uh, the X7 removed that whole weird thing completely, which is awesome. It's one of those things I was looking for because I'm the kind of guy that would power down the N64 and then I would power it back on just to make sure that that save stuck. And I was like, okay, it's there. I'm good to go. And then I'll turn it back off again, which is kind of a waste of time. So you kind of have to consider those things. Uh, this one you don't have to worry about that at all it also does have a real-time clock in case you want to uh, play a game like animal crossing that does require that particular feature and it also has a game shark built into the everdrive x7 as well so as far as features and how many features are available to you i decided to go with the x7 uh, or the everdrive x7 which retails on the Crix website for about 200 dollars. i don't recommend getting it on any other site like amazon or ebay because you're going to get charged about a hundred dollars more so this is the one I'm sticking with. I'm really excited to try it out. So let's go ahead and boot this up and see what we can do with it. So here we are in the main menu here. And it looks like there's two folders here. Actually, I had to create this one so I could put my ROM files in there, but it looks like the ED64. This is where you can change your background image. And it looks like I will be doing that because I don't like the one I'm seeing there. Way too 90s for me. Some emulators. I did mention there's an NES emulator, but it looks like there's also a Game Boy and a Game Boy Color one, which I'll have to test those out. That's pretty neat. Game data. I don't have any saves, so I don't have to worry about that. It looks like the rest of this is all just firmware information. So let's go ahead and boot the games here. I already put a couple of test ones in here. The Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, Resident Evil 2, Star Fox 64, and Super Mario 64. And I'm going to run Resident Evil 2 only because that is the hardest game for me to emulate on any emulator I've ever done for the N64. So if this works, then I am a happy, happy camper. So it looks like from the start menu, you can kind of look at the ROM info. You see what like region it is and the save types and everything. So I'm not going to mess around with that too much. It looks like you can load up some cheats and you can actually do the ROM configuration which is the SRAM, the real-time clock right there. We're going to leave that off and then the region. So that's pretty neat. We're not going to mess with this too much. Uh, I think I just feel like running the games and playing them as they are. So let's go ahead and start this and hopefully this runs. This is a pretty, the largest uh, N64 game out there, I think, or one of the largest ones at 64 megabytes. Looks like it detected the expansion pack, which is awesome. And it took no time to load. That was awesome. And I think I already made it further at this point than I have with any other emulator than I have before. Let's see how these movies run. I know they run at 15 frames per second on the N64. Oh, that looks... Oh, that looks so bad. But that's the way it's supposed to look. That's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and load new game here. Normal. Leon. Let's go... Oh, violence. Hi. You can change your blood color. Let's keep it red. This is loading so freaking fast because it's on cartridge. Oh, that looks so terrible. All right, let's test out this game with the controller here. Okay, all right. I'm not mad at it. The D-pad's kind of weird, but yeah, other than that, it's this game is running flawlessly. It's running perfectly fine. No issue what's, whatsoever. I think there was a weird, a weird glitch there. I'll have to look into that. Just as, I just think everything just looks terrible compared to like the PS1 version because this is the N64. <laughs> Freeze. Awesome. I love it. Who are you? What are you doing here? This little system has come a long way from being an eBay item that was not tested. It only came with a power brick to being fully clean, added an RGB mod so we can have the best analog picture quality possible out of this. And we actually replaced the thermal pads as well. So the longevity and life of this little system is guaranteed for many years to come. We also bought all, all the accessories that we needed, including an EverDrive 64 X7 so we can play all the games that we want. So I think at this point, this N64 is complete. 
I did go ahead and went on eBay and bought a box, like an original box of the N64, uh, the styrofoam and the manual included as well, which cost more than I would ever would have wished to spend for it. But since I'm a completionist, I went ahead and grabbed it. So we can go ahead and put this inside that box and then tuck it away with my other systems as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this series of N64 videos. Anytime I do any other mods to this N64 or clean up any controllers, I'll be adding it to the same playlist. I do have another system that it's on its way over and it's a system that I've never owned before, but I am super excited to get my hands on it. There was a PlayStation and there was an N64 and then there was another one. And that is your clue for which one I'll be working on. I, like I said, I can't wait. But if this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through and cleans up systems, uh, repairs them if need be, and sometimes even mods them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post a video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I had so much fun and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.